grew up in Northern Virginia in like the DC area, so it's a good area because there are all a bunch of great museums in DC. And um, the inevitable next step for me was art school, so I went to the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore for four years. Uh, my major is in painting, even though I love drawing a lot more, usually. Well, I graduated and I wanted something different and I didn't know where to go and a friend of mine was actually moving here and I said jokingly, I'll just move there with you and then she was like, oh my god, yes, and, and then I emailed a bunch of the galleries in the area and I emailed the gallery above and Chris saw my website and he was like, I want to show your work and then It'll go from here to this other gallery, and then from there to another gallery. And so I was like, all right, I guess I'll move there then. <laughs> then I came here, and I was miserable for a while because I didn't have time to do art, and my job had nothing to do with art. And um, then Chris was uh, leaving the gallery for his graphic design business, and he was looking for somebody to take over the gallery. And I had just decided a week before what I wanted to do with my life was to run a gallery. So here I am. This is my friend um, who is very nice and pretty in real life, but I um, made her a lot more interesting, more character or something. Um, I exaggerated a lot of things, you know, her hair, I daubed up her makeup, her teeth aren't really yellow and crooked, and um, this piece, everyone seems to read it in, in just the way that I intended them to, which is why this piece is such a success. I mean, everybody like hears her cackling and, and can tell that she's intoxicated, even though there, you know, that there's no evidence that she's intoxicated, but you can just tell she's on something, and um, everyone comes up with a narrative for it, and, and that's what's great about you know creating a persona is people come up with all these narratives and so I have all this power to create this whole new situation. Well, I did a series on honesty. Uh, I live an extremely honest life, so honest that even when it would be convenient to lie, I can't. Uh, and my friends had started this thing where they were writing these lists of 100 honest things about themselves. And nobody had to pull their arm or anything, but they revealed all these deep things that none of us knew about each other. And I just thought that that was beautiful. It was just a simple opportunity, and then people were like really revealing themselves. And so I decided I had to make a series about it. And this is my list of 100 honest things. And I say quite a few things in there that I never wanted to tell anybody ever, but it feels good to have it out there. And that's, you know, it's on wood because I felt like it was just a brutal, honest, you know, plywood, and I left the stamp on there. This, this was a self-portrait, so this one is me uh, two years ago, so I have shorter hair. Um, I always do work from the figure, and I'm my most available model. Plus, every work that every artist does is a self-portrait in some way or another. I guess maybe it goes along with the honest thing. I'm just more honest about it. Yeah, that's me. I started working in sketchbooks about five years ago, and ever since then, I always keep a sketchbook. I'm a huge sketchbook artist, I carry it with me everywhere. I draw on it by myself, when I'm hanging out with people, when I'm out, and it's just a great way to skew my brain onto a page. You know, formal art, the art that's on the walls, there's all this pressure to do some big statement, but with these books, they're intimate, and I can just put in them whatever I'm thinking at the time. And I'm also obsessed with lines. Also because I think that they're honest. Just a simple line rather than shading because it's like revealing your tricks but hopefully keeping the magic.